This is topological manifolds part four, and uh, we're now going to talk about projective spaces. So the real projective space, RPN, is defined to be the set of lines through the origin in Rn plus one. So we can realize this as a quotient space of Rn plus one without the origin, um, where we glue together any two points that are on the same line through the origin. So uh, we can say x is glued to lambda x for all lambda in the real numbers except zero. Um, and this isn't the only way to think about RPN. We can also think about it as the, the n-sphere um, modulo the equivalence relation that glues together antipodal points. Uh, so x and minus x for each x in Sn, if we glue those together, we also get Rpn. And hopefully you can see that this is equivalent to um, the other definition about lines through the origin in Rm plus 1. So, um, so what does this look like then? Well, if we think about the rp1, which is sometimes called the real projective line. Um, this is the set of lines through the origin in r2. So you might have in your mind some sort of image like this, of uh, the space of all lines through the origin, uh, where each of these lines is a distinct element in rp1. And then rp2, is sometimes called the real projective plane. And this is the set of all lines through the origin in R3, and so on. So um, we want to prove that the RPN is a manifold, and I'm going to break the proof up into a few stages. So in this video, we're only going to give the proof that RPN is Hausdorff. So, So if we want to prove that RPN is a Hausdorff space, we need to show that for any two distinct elements in RPN, um, there are disjoint open sets uh, containing those two points. So uh, let's take two elements, x and y in RPN, two disjoint elements, uh, sorry, two distinct elements, and then um, each of these elements is, is really an equivalence class. It, it represents a line in Rm plus 1. So we can think of x and y as being lines. And then we can think, well, if we want to find distinct uh, disjoint open sets around the two lines, so if we have two lines like this, well, we could imagine some sort of cone containing this line and another cone containing the red line. And then the cones, um, if we want them to intersect only at the origin, um, so, so that's a nice idea. We could think about trying to make that rigorous. Um, I think it will be easier if we consider RPN to be a quotient space of Sn. So considering RPN to be a quotient of Sn, uh, this quotient up here, then what we can do is the same sort of thing. So, so now uh, we're gluing together antipodal points. So these two points here are both in the equivalence class of X. And if we have two red points here, these are both in the equivalence class of Y. And um, so if we give these names, so we can say there are P and Q in Sn such that um, the such that um, if pi is the quotient map, so maybe if we let pi from Sn to Rpn be the quotient map, then um, such that pi of P is pi of minus P is X and pi of q is pi of minus q is y. 
So we've got P and minus P and Q and minus Q. And now SN, we've already proved that SN is a manifold. We know SN is Hausdorff. Um, so because SN is Hausdorff, there are disjoint open sets um, U, V, uh, U prime, V prime containing P, Q, minus P, and minus Q. So we can find, so going back to this picture here, we've got these four disjoint open sets on the sphere containing these points. Um, and in fact, maybe it'll be easier if we take, um, if we take, uh, without loss of generality, we can take U prime and V prime to be the set of, um, minus u such that u is in u and minus v such that v is in v. So then these, um, so if we take these sets around, so this is u around p and this is u prime around minus p and these are now mirror images of each other since we're taking u prime to be the set of minus u where u is in u. Um, and then we can say that, uh, so we know that um, that p and minus p are both in u union u prime, and p and minus p are not in uh, the union of v and v prime, and um, and we know that pi of u is the same as pi of u prime. And this is because both p and minus p map to the same point. And it's also because we're taking u prime to be a mirror image of u. And also pi of v is the same as pi of v prime. So, um, so the quotient map doesn't identify any points between um, the open u and v sets. Um, that is to say pi of u intersect pi of v is empty. So we found our disjoint open sets around x and y and rpn. Um, we can just take pi of u and pi of v. And um, obviously there's a bit to check that these are both open, but um, that follows from the fact that pi is a quotient map and u and v are open. So um, yeah, so we're done. So we've proven, so uh, we can say pi of u and pi of v are disjoint open sets containing x and y. So we're done. RPN must be Hausdorff.